choice handling provides your dog with the option to start or stop a procedure at any point. It can work really well for things such as nail trimming, eye drops, ear drops, and even vet visits and grooming. Choice handling can work amazingly for dogs that struggle. However, if your dog is showing aggression, please don't try to do this without the help of a professional. Choice handling is something used in zoos with zoo animals such as hyenas, lions and even alligators. It's so important and essential that perhaps it's something we should be teaching our dogs as regularly as teaching them a sit or a high five. Your dog's start stop button can be anything from just stepping onto a towel, meaning the procedure can start, to a sustained hand touch. But this one we are going to teach a chin target and somebody can't wait to get started so let's get going. Step one I want to teach a chin target so we're going to start with the first step of that. Depending on the dog I'm working with I might want to decide whether I want to bring energy levels up or energy levels down. So for example with Badger because we're looking to do a calm activity and food tends to make him feel the opposite I'm going to keep my body quite calm and keep things relaxed. And I'm just gonna lure his, yes, head over my cupped hand so he starts to get used to the feel of his chin touching my hand. Yes. Yes. If you struggle with a lure, the trick is food right on the nose, slow movements really really slow yes if i've got a little bit of a stickier dog that doesn't get so crazy when food comes out i might want to add a bit of energy to it to keep things fun so i might get up and i might add a bit of movement So I'm gonna have a few treats in my hand and my next step is I want his chin to make contact with the cup of my hand. So I'm gonna lure him over and then I'm gonna bring the treat down, yes, so that his chin hits the palm of my hand. Lure him over, treat goes down, yes. Yes. If I want to start adding duration, I might keep feeding while his chin stays there. Yes. It's worth hanging out there because he gets the extra food. Yes. Yes. It's important to think about where your food placement is. So he's going to be looking for where the food comes. So it's going to be easier for him to perform the task if the food's in front of him. So I now want to add a bit of duration to my chin target. So what I'm looking for is a nice firm press of the chin and I'm going to hold off the treat slightly so that he gets the pause in. I also like to give a dog a keep going signal and Badger's keep going signal is a finger up and it just means keep doing whatever you're doing. So I like that, but I want a bit more pressure with the chin before I move on to my next stage. But what I'm looking for is that stillness. Yes. Yes. Also, don't go too fast. So you want to build it up step by step. So all I'm looking for is a second of stillness and I'm going to reward it quickly before he moves so he gets the idea. And there. Yes, we've got a really firm chin pressing down, which is exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm going to reward that. For true choice handling, I want to provide breaks. So if he chooses to go for a break, I will reward that. But that way, it's a true choice to come and put his chin on the target because he's also getting rewarded for moving away as well. 
It's also a good idea to have a little snuffle mat or some food scattered around just so they have another way to get out if they need to. Because dogs generally prefer to work for food, you'll find they come back anyway to engage in the activity. So our next step, we're already going to start to introduce our hand movement. We do that really early on. So we're not actually going to touch him yet, but we are going to add distraction. And I don't like to lie to our dogs, so any equipment that you plan to use, such as nail trimmers, um, eye drops, ear drops, or a brush, have it around at this point so that it doesn't become a surprise later. Marker words are so important at this stage as well. As you can see, I usually fumble about with my treats, but my marker word, my yes, tells him the exact moment that I like. So it doesn't matter if my treat delivery is then a little bit slow. I'm being clear to him. I like that bit. So I've now got my treats handy next to my leg so that this hand can be free. So my chin target comes down and I do a little hand movement, yes, and a reward. So tiny little hand movement, yes. If his head comes off, I'm gonna hold off my hand movement and I'm gonna wait till he replaces it and then I'm gonna move. Yes. So he starts to then get the concept that he's in control of that movement. That's a chewy treat. <laughs> You saw he wasn't quite in position, so I held off, he readjusted, then we're ready to go. Then comes the fun part, because you can start playing around with your movements. So I might be wanting to make my movement bigger, I might be wanting to wave my equipment, or I might be ready to touch him. So we're going to go in for the touch because that's when he tends to move, so it'll be a good example of what to do in that situation. So I'm going to reach in, he comes off, I stop. So if he's not coping with that, I might go for the other side and I'm going to make my action smaller. Yes, so it's just a gesture towards him. I'm going to wait for him to readjust. Yes. I'm going to work through that frustration because I know Badger, but if your dog is vocalising a lot, consider whether they might need a break. But that's pretty much Badger's go-to. He can cope with that, so I'm going to work through it. Yes. 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 So essentially he's tolerating it for the food and that's why I want to make sure he gets lots of nice breaks and he's got that choice if he needs it. So if he happened to take himself away, I'm going to throw him some food for that. We want to make the value high if we're doing a procedure that's particularly unpleasant and we want to take into consideration that we want to start with stuff that definitely isn't that unpleasant to our dogs. So you know, we're going to make, if we're working up to doing a vaccine, then we're going to make it a nice neck massage. Then when they actually have the vaccine, they might not even notice it's happened with a bit of luck. We work through tiny steps at a time. So depending on what you're working towards, so say I'm working towards a brush, then it would be my hand movement. Yes. Then maybe I reach for the brush. Then I pick it up slightly. Yes. A little bit more. Yes, didn't mean to drop it. <laughs> yes. Then 
until eventually I build up to making contact. Then if you want to train it with safety in place then you can pop a house blind on or if your dog is already already fully muzzle associated then popping a muzzle on yes. if they're not but you would like to use a muzzle i have some muzzle videos further back on my feed the most important thing is to keep reminding yourself to throw some treats away or throw some food into a snuffle mat so that your dog is constantly reminded this is their choice, have a break, you're rewarded for those breaks so you can take one anytime. If you're just doing this handling at home and you want to do it yourself, that's great. You can just build up till you're able to trim a nail and treat, do a few br brushes and treat, put some eye or ear drops in and give a treat that's perfect. If you want to take it further and transfer it to the vets, then your next steps would be to bring in a second person. Start with someone that your dog knows really well. So you want to just add the concept of there's another person involved now. Uh, you do the chin target and the treating. Second person does the movements and the handling. Start from the beginning again. So they start with movement. Your dog's going to get there faster because they know the concept now, but you want to build those steps slowly again. Then bring in a slightly less known person if you can, that would be ideal, so someone the dog knows but doesn't know as well. Then move on to a stranger. It's great nowadays because we can actually bring vets into the home. There's vets that do home visits, um, there's whole companies that come to the home and physios. So the ideal situation would be you don't have to change the environment at all, you just bring someone in. If you don't have access to that, then the next step would be to find a willing vet who has the time and then work in the waiting room until you're building into the consultation room. It's such a useful life skill for any dog and it just it builds so much trust around handling. It's really, really been a game changer for some of the dogs I've worked with. So I can't wait to hear how you get on.